So up to this point, we've talked about um, where a function f of x is increasing, which we use our first derivative, uh, and decreasing, as well as um, the function's concavity and inflection points. And we have also used the first derivative, or we could use concavity to determine a relative maximum or minimum. Now we're actually going to talk about absolute maximum and minimum, which is known as EVT or the extreme value theorem. Uh, we're skipping 4.3. So by definition, um, absolute extrema, uh, you need to consider an interval in the domain of a given function and some given point x sub 0. So we'll just call this C on an interval from A to B. And um, what we say is this function has an absolute maximum if at that point C, or x sub 0, if f of x is less than f of x sub 0, meaning this y value right here, the y value is the greatest in the entire uh, graph or uh, table of values. So the y value is the greatest. Okay, so this would be an absolute maximum. So then we would also say um, that the function has an absolute minimum at, if at that given value c um, or x sub 0, if that y value, meaning f of x sub 0, is less than the function itself, meaning this y value is the smallest overall. in the entire spectrum of the values in the interval. And we would say that the function has absolute extremum, so that's just, just, this is just in general, if at that c value, um, if the function has either an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum, it doesn't necessarily have to be both. So these first three graphs here have no domain restrictions. So this would be similar to a quadratic. Uh, it doesn't matter what the function is, but here, um, I just created numerical values on these graphs so that we could give an example of how you give the value of the absolute maximum or absolute minimum. But here they're saying that the function has an absolute minimum um, on the given interval from negative infinity to positive infinity because here this graph is implied to continue in either direction for x. So here this is the lowest value overall, meaning this graph is not going to decrease at some point. Uh, the values will continue to increase for y. So the way you would provide the solution here is that um, f of x has an absolute min at f of 0 is equal to 2, meaning we're saying the lowest y value is 2 when x is 0, or you can say an absolute min is 2, but you cannot say, do not say that the absolute min occurs at an x value. Do not say that because the min is not an x value, it's a y value. Okay, so whenever you're answering, you use the y value. Here, this function, because it increases, it's a linear function, increases um, and decreases in either direction, so we have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity, but there is no absolute max or absolute min, so there's no absolute extrema. Here in this um, no domain restriction graph, meaning the graph will just level off and approach uh, your x-axis in either direction, you have both an absolute maximum and an absolute minimum. So here I gave an example of how you would answer, you have an absolute max is at 5, whatever that y value is, I just made that up, or f of 0 is equal to 5, and then here I just stated that the absolute min is at negative 2. Okay, these values were just made up. So then here, uh, we're looking at two uh, functions that have domain restrictions. So this graph here would be similar to um, a cotangent graph. Um, so in this, or uh, cubi uh, cub yeah, a cubic function, but it's negative x cubed. Um, anyway, so the function has no absolute extrema on this open interval from A to B. I'm saying that this is probably a cotangent graph because you have vertical asymptotes, therefore you're um, a and B values are open paren, vertical asymptotes. So there's no absolute max or absolute min. Here the graph levels off, so this would not be considered any type of min or max. But then when you look at this graph, which is very similar to this one right here, 
um, we basically took that linear function and gave it a domain restriction, so we cut it. Um, so you have, um, you would say f of x is defined on the interval from a to b, so here like this, hard brackets, and um, in this case we could say that we have an absolute max at whatever, I don't know, let's say this is 2, and then this could be at negative 2, um, so you would say f of b is equal to 2, f of a is equal to negative 2, absolute max, absolute min. Um, but what you need to understand is that absolute maxes, absolute maxes and mins can occur at endpoints, but relative maxes and mins will never occur at endpoints. So there's a difference. So an absolute max can occur at an endpoint, but a relative cannot. And the reason why is because, remember when you test a relative max or a relative min, you are looking for um, the sign change from either positive to negative or negative to positive, and here we can't see what's happening on the left here or on the right. So we can talk about absolutes here, but we cannot talk about relatives. So you need to make sure you're clear on that.